All right, guys, how's it going? I've got a couple of free hours spare to myself on Saturday afternoon and I just decided to do a little bonus video. Now obviously Vega is the hot topic and last week we saw the launch of the Frontier Edition which was the non-gaming version with non-gaming drivers. This was something that AMD was keen to point out and the assumption is that the RX version, that is the gaming version, is launching towards the end of July with availability likely to be seen around the middle of August. Now regarding the Frontier Edition, there was an awful lot said about the poor gaming results with a lot of people saying, look, it's not the gaming edition, it's not a gaming card. To which most of us in the press said, yeah, we fully understand there is no gaming drivers for this yet, but here's the results anyway, and they don't look very good. But almost universally, the press to a man, including myself, are of the opinion that drivers can only do so much. Whereas a lot of guys watching this may well be under the impression that drivers are going to make a massive difference. In my case, I believe that the RX Vega would beat the GTX 1080. In most games, but I also feel that it will fall short of the 1080 Ti in just about all games. Now we didn't have to wait long for the first piece of information on the RX Vega. We actually got it the day after I released my video. And Khalid over at WCCF and Why Cry at Video Cards had unearthed some 3D Mark 11 performance leaks. Now this was a Vega 687F C1 engineering sample with a clock speed of 1630 megahertz. Now, as you know, the Frontier Edition has a clock speed of 1600 megahertz. And Raja did say that there would be faster RX gaming versions. So there you have it, it's an extra 30 megahertz. We can be pretty confident that final clocks will not be much higher than this. WCCF also did a comparison between the RX Vega here in the first column. This is a GTX 1080 here, with a 1080 Ti in the third column, and finally a 1070. Now, this score of 31,873 graphics score is quite nicely ahead of the GTX 1080, 27,618. Though, to be fair, it's still quite some way behind the 1080 Ti. 3D Mark 11 is an application which scales very well with clock speeds and shader count, but I still thought that these numbers looked a little bit off. And later on the evening, Khalid updated his results, adding their own Founders Edition GTX 1080 and also with an overclock. So as you can see, it's all pretty tight there. An overclock 1080 at 1930 megahertz came in just a little behind the RX Vega. Over at Video Cards though, Why Cry had a different opinion. His opinion that the highest score was achieved with an overclocked chip. Because 3D Mark 11 does not recognize unreleased overclocked graphics cards very well. But he reckoned the good news is that RX Vega is well above the overclocked 1070, but the bad news is it might still be slower than the overclocked GTX 1080. What was really interesting though was that compared to some older benchmarks, Around three months old, this 687FC1 engineering sample has gained around 15% performance. Now we can see here, looking at the video cars chart, these two bottom runs for the RX Vega, Whycry has assumed are at stock, whereas the rest of them with this 1630MHz plus he has assumed have been overclocked. Now looking at the numbers, it's maybe obvious to see why that is. There is quite a gap between 31,873 for the fastest Vega run compared to only 27,890 for the slowest one. And in fact, that's a 14% gap. So I decided to take a closer look at all these numbers, figure out what exactly is going on here. Now, I just started by taking a look at the lowest 3D Mark 11 score. You can actually click on it over at Video Cards or you can do a search for it now. Now on the result page, you can actually click on show result details. And there's a bunch of stuff down this right hand box where we can see the run was made on July the 4th, 2017. This ID is also quite important, but we'll talk about that in a minute. You also get a detailed breakdown of all the graphics tests and stuff like that, and the settings used. So long as the default settings are used, then results are comparable. Scrolling down though brings us to the amount of memory, the core clock, and the memory bus clock. This is when we knew that we were dealing with what is almost certainly Vega RX. But very importantly, driver version 22.19.653.0. You can also see the processor, they're using an 1800X and the rest of the system down the bottom. So this looks like a typical AMD benchmarking system to me. But going back to this driver, basically speaking, Googling that number throws out all of the results. And until three days ago, this driver had never been seen before. So what this basically tells us is, this is almost certainly the latest AMD driver for Vega RX. This is the driver they're talking about when they say that Vega RX will launch with proper gaming drivers. And they talked about it at PC Perspective as well in my previous video, where AMD said that the RX driver was on a different branch. Well, this is almost certainly it. So 
Like I said, we've got nine results here. You can click on them all over at Video Cards and have a look through them all. Now, I'm not exactly an expert on 3D Mark, something I've never really been that bothered about, but I did decide to download the software. You can get it for free. The basic edition 3D Mark 11 is a free download and it allows you to run this very same 3D Mark 11 performance demo. I did a bunch of my own testing earlier today, as you can see here, using my RX 580, but I also noticed this benchmark ticker. So opening up this, it's pretty cool. You can actually see results coming in in real time. Over at the right hand side, we can see what's been run. So you've got all these different 3D Mark results coming in in real time. So like I said, I've done a bunch of testing today. These last five, I started about an hour and a half ago. So five different benchmark runs took me 20 minutes and taking a closer look at them showed up one or two interesting things. You can just add all of these to compare. So the first one I did was down here at number five. So I'm gonna add that to compare. Then number four, number three, number two, finally the last one that I did. If you just now click on compare, and we can see them all here. If we just take the graphic score all the way along, we can first of all see 18,683, followed by a very close 18,738, followed by a much bigger 20,558, and again a bigger 20,516. Now what I had actually done here was, these two first runs here, I ran 3D Mark 11 using my Afterburner and Reva Tuner stats on the screen. The next two runs, I was running it with the stats off. And as you can see, there is quite a big difference. And just in case that was a fluke, I once again ran it at the end with the Reva Tuner and Afterburner stats on screen display. And once again, we see it's a way down here. So that was just a little curiosity there. This is something I talked about in a video a couple of months ago, but Afterburner, the on screen display, definitely affects the frame rate of AMD graphics cards. This is something that AMD really needs to fix because there will almost certainly be people benchmarking games while running Afterburner. But that was just a curiosity. What I was really interested in was this very last column, the ID. And as you can see, the ID is increasing each time, as you would expect. For every person that does it, basically speaking, every person who does it runs a benchmark on the benchmark ticker and they simply add one to this ID. So 2816, 2827, 2838, 2843, 2853. Five runs quite close together. Now there was a point to this of course, and it was going back to what video cards thought, with the highest score 687FC1 being achieved with an overclocked chip. Now actually looking closer at that one, we see something else. It was actually run on an i7-6700K. So there's your highest score, a little bit higher than the highest score of the 1800X. Now in most cases, the CPU wouldn't make a huge difference to the graphics score. But 3D Mark 11 is now seven years old. It came out in 2010, and there will now be an element of a slight CPU factor. And that's what we're seeing here. So the i7-6700K did beat the best Ryzen score just by a little. But even if we just ignore that one, we can see that why cry over at Video Cards, he did feel that most of the rest of them were overclocked. There's a gap of around 10% between the top Ryzen score and the bottom Ryzen score. So you might think, okay, they've run a couple of runs at stock, these two down the bottom, run at the stock 1630 megahertz, and then they've run a bunch of overclocked results, just to see what kind of scores they can get. Incidentally, at the top here, I think this is why Cry's own GTX 1080, it scores quite highly at around 30 to 32,000. And at first glance, it certainly does appear that Vega RX overclock is just a little bit behind the overclock 1080. But on closer inspection of these results, and please excuse this awful chart that I threw together today, but we can see that there is no real pattern to the results. The red ones are the 1800X, the blue one that's in the lead is the 6700K, but if we just ignore that one, we can see what happened was 29,000, then the next runs down at 28,000, that's like a loss of a thousand points. At this point, they've decided to benchmark it on the Intel system, and they've actually come away with a pretty decent score, almost 14% higher. Then they've gone back to the AMD system, and they've got scores between 29,300 and 30,680. But then after those two good scores, we see a couple of mediocre scores, followed by yet another good score. So there's no pattern to this. And the point here is, of course, it's not very likely that any of these numbers were actually overclocked. I mean, why would it start at 29,000 and then drop down to 28,000 just to go up to 30,000 and then instantly back down below 27,900? Doesn't really make any sense. You wouldn't decide to overclock it here, then take the overclock off and then overclock it again right at the very end. That makes no sense. So what we're looking at here is just a kind of random bunch of scores, some being better than others. Now, I very much doubt that they're running stuff like Afterburner, but you never actually know. 
because maybe they were just interested in seeing if the GPU was throttling. Again, I don't believe that's likely to be the case. What I actually believe is, more than likely, we're looking at a case where Vega's power management might need a bit of driver work as well. We actually saw this at PC Perspective and possibly even at Gamers Nexus where power numbers were all over the chart and it appeared to be doing some pretty strange things. So it's possible there that there is a driver issue just with the power management and what it probably comes down to is keeping the clock stable. So for me, almost certainly not overclocked and there was one more piece of evidence which made me believe that. The very next day we saw a comparison, somebody who's got a Vega Frontier Edition up against the Vega RX. Again, we can see the different drivers here. This is a driver that the Frontier Edition launched with, and this is what we believe to be the latest Vega RX driver. But all the versions are pretty much the same. The only real difference is it's a 1700X now up against the 6700K. We've already seen that that can affect the result, so it's difficult to say. But it's pretty interesting anyway to see that the Frontier Edition scored almost 29,000 points. Now, as you expect, the physics score, which is based heavily on CPU cores, is a lot better on the Ryzen 7. And the combined score is also better because of that. But just looking at the graphics scores, and in particular graphics test 1, there's a very big increase of 19% with the rest of the test being between 6 and 8% in favour of the RX. It's difficult to say exactly because it's not apples to apples, but certainly this 19% one is a very, very big jump, and there's a pretty good chance that this is down to the driver. The curious part being that graphics test 1 is the only test out of the four graphics tests which has no tessellation whatsoever. So could that be affecting this score? I really hope that AMD has got rid of this tessellation monkey off their back, but you just never know. Graphics Test 1 seems to put a lot of emphasis on shader power as well, and there was a little bit of throttling seen on my RX 580, so this could also be the result of more aggressive throttling on the Frontier Edition. The last thing to talk about again on drivers is this whole thing about this Fiji fallback driver or Fiji drivers. Reese over at AMD once again said, look, this Fiji drivers meme needs to stop. There is obvious commonality, that's just how software engineering needs to work for a GPU, but calling it a Fiji driver or Fiji fallback is wrong. To me this is just about putting expectations back in check, back to reality. There is no magical driver coming out that's going to propel the RX Vega above the 1080 Ti. Over time, over the next year or two, I am absolutely sure that it will be faster than the 1080 Ti, but this is something I'll talk about during a review. That's assuming I'm going to get a card. I don't know. But there are reasons for why Vega and Volta coming later should mature much better than the current generation. Not least of all when you consider the D3, D12 feature levels of which Vega has everything and presumably Volta will also be the same. There is also all the stuff like the FP16 and obviously the high bandwidth cache. I'm simply saying that I am maintaining my position that I have held since last January. After I saw the Doom video where I said it's just about faster than a GTX 1080, possibly getting halfway between the 1080 and the 1080 Ti, doing better in DX12, and this is of course important because Raja said at the recent AMA, when asked if the card profits from DX12 or is DX12 performance similar to DX11, he said that if a game or game engine prioritizes low level access to the GPU, for example, DX12 and Vulcan, Vega will soar. So this 3D Mark 11 number could well be kind of worst case. This is DX11 and we know that AMD always did better in DX12. And Raja himself is saying, yes, Vega is going to be better, DX12 and Vulcan. So really we should now be expecting, if the Vega RX is now basically on par in DX11, which is what it looks like to me with the GTX 1080, then overall, when throwing the DX12 games into the mix, we should expect to see 10, maybe even as much as 20% faster. It's getting closer to the 1080 Ti, but not quite there yet. This has been my position for 7 months. When I saw that Doom video, like I said, there was a point to AMD showing Doom there, and that point was Doom is a very highly optimised game almost by default, and we saw it was around about 10% faster than the GTX 1080 back then. And my position back then was simple, if it was only 10% faster than the GTX 1080 in Doom, then I'm not expecting to see a great deal more than that at launch. And it really does look like that's what we're going to get. Had AMD showed Vega 10% faster in, say, Grand Theft Auto V, that would have been a completely different matter. Because 10% faster in one of the worst DX11 games for AMD seven months ago, I would have said, 
Well, this thing is going to be a lot faster when it launches. But that's pretty much how I see this going and you're welcome to take it or leave it. But to me, it certainly looks like all this delay this last month, they've had to do this because they have simply had to clear the GTX 1080. Not beating the GTX 1080 would have been an utter catastrophe. But now that they look like they've cleared that, even if it's using a bit more power, at least it's faster than the 1080. AMD knows this. They've always had a graphics card that they've had to beat. If you remember when they launched the 290, the R9 290, they beat the old Titan with that. Ended up with a hellishly loud and hot card, but at least it was very fast. It was a similar story with the RX 480. They simply had to beat the GTX 1070 and they ended up breaking the PCIe spec because they had to push those clock speeds that little bit further. Now you can see that they're well clear of the 970. That's now a gap of 13%, at least at 1440p. This extra month of the driver work looks like they're beating the 1080 before launch. But right, this was supposed to be a small video and I've managed to ramble on for God knows how long again. But it seems to make some kind of sense to me, so hopefully it makes sense to you as well. I'll catch you later, guys.